Blockasaurus is jumping on us. We're going to throw a meatball. Fire our one. And unfortunately, our turret placement was just a little off. We have a minion taking tower for us. So we're going to go ahead and fire our one. And we're able to clean up the Blockasaurus. The minions will destroy our turret faster than enemy gods, or at least they have a little bit of bonus damage. Whenever you're placing your turret, you don't want to place it next to minions because the enemy god can hit minions and your turret. We're able to clean up raw. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we're doing a skin showcase for the Space Cadet Vulcan skin. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. If you are a returning viewer, I feel like Vulcan is kind of middle of the pack in terms of mid laners. He doesn't have additional dash, so there are quite a few gods that can counter him pretty hard. He does, however, gain some additional movement speed whenever he lands an ability. I think this skin is fantastic. I really like the voice pack that goes along with it. So let's go ahead and jump into Vulcan's kit. Vulcan's one, backfire. Vulcan blasts fireball out of his forge, pushing him back and dealing damage to all enemies in his path, marking the first god that it hits. The infernal cannon prioritizes the marked target and deals 15% bonus damage to that god. The marked lifetime is 4 seconds. Vulcan's two, inferno cannon. Vulcan constructs an infernal cannon that shoots fireballs in a cone and deals damage to a target every second. The infernal cannon lasts until it is destroyed or until another is placed. This inherits Vulcan's penetration but does not apply on hit effects. The cannon takes 50% additional damage from non-god sources and it ignores 25% of the target's magical protections. Vulcan's 3. Magma Bomb, often referred to as Meatball. Vulcan tosses a bomb that explodes in a radius on impact with the ground, damaging and knocking back enemies. Vulcan's ultimate, Earth Shaker. Vulcan launches a rocket that explodes on impact with the ground. The rocket starts at 75% strength and increases in damage the further it travels from Vulcan. And finally, Vulcan's passive, Master Craftsman. Whenever Vulcan successfully hits an enemy god with an ability, he gains 15% bonus movement speed and 15 MP5 for 5 seconds. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point into our 1. Level 2, put a point into our 3. Level 3, put a point into our 2. Level 4, we want to put another point into our 1. Then we want to max out our ultimate whenever we can. Max out our 1, max out our 3, then max out our 2. We're going to go ahead and hit our red buff. We left Fountain with Mage's Blessing, the tier 1 of Doom Orb, 3 health potions, and 2 mana potions. We are going against a Raw. Raw typically has a decent amount of movement speed, so that is a little unfortunate for us. The general combo that we want to hit is we want to land our 3, our 2, then our 1, and we're able to clean up the Raw. Vulcan is not one of my best gods, so I do often forget to throw out the two after landing my meatball. But you want to throw out your three, throw out your two, and then hit him with your one, and the one will cause the turret to start locking on to the enemy god. You do have to lead Vulcan's one a little bit, so whenever they get hit by the meatball, they're going to be knocked up, and you're going to be able to tell where they're going to land. That's where you want to fire your one. Right now we're saving up enough money for the lifesteal boots and then we're probably going to back. I see a lot of Vulcans leveling their two first, so they'll put a point to it, drop it off at speed, and then run to lane. The turret will allow you to get the farm if it's shooting something and you're not near it. However, if the enemy god hits your turret, there goes your wave clear at level 1. There's the general combo, minus the turret. Okay. The we just hit level 5. 
We've got a full level on the enemy raw. We're gonna go ahead and back and pick up our boots. Without getting too technical, that's an upgrade. We don't have much MP5, so we're probably gonna pick up a mana potion right here. MP5 is the amount of mana you recover every five seconds. We also got first blood, so that's gonna be an additional 500 gold in our pocket. We're going to go ahead and rotate the R red buff. Right now we are trying to conserve a little bit of mana. We only have one potion and we need to save about 1150 in terms of gold. Bakasaur jumps on us, he uses his ultimate. We're going to have to just fall back under tower. We didn't need to use our Aegis because we were so close to tower. We might be able to get him with our ultimate. We're going to go ahead and cast it. Taking a decent amount of damage from the Bakasaur minions that he spit up. Raw misses his ultimate and we're able to survive another day. This is where the lifesteal boots really come in handy. We're going to be able to just fire a one, start healing up, get some basics, and continue to heal. Bakasaur is jumping on us. We're going to throw a meatball. Fire our one. And unfortunately, our turret placement was just a little off. We have a minion taking tower for us, so we're going to go ahead and fire our one, and we're able to clean up the Ubakasaura. The minions will destroy our turret faster than enemy gods, or at least they have a little bit of bonus damage. Whenever you're placing your turret, you don't want to place it next to minions because the enemy god can hit minions and your turret. We're able to clean up raw. We had some minions that really helped us out. We landed a basic attack and we're able to clean them up. We're going to start working on Doom Lord and it was actually 1050 instead of 1150. From Vulcan's passive, we gain 15% movement speed. If we can get some movement speed from Doom Orb, that should help us survive a little bit more when Bakasaur is trying to pressure us. I think movement speed is probably the most important slept on stat in Smite. It's just really good to have. Online. We're going to go ahead and hit the small harpy, just try to get some golden XP while we wait for the minion wave to spawn. So right there, we hit him with our 3 and it knocked him back and our 1 was not within range to get the hit. That will happen sometimes. Usually they will fly to the side and not directly backwards. Oh, that was a sloppy one. So we threw our kit aiming for an enemy god and we missed, so now we need to save our kit for the wave clear. We hit the three, we hit the turret, but we missed the one. If we would have landed the one, I think we would have gotten the pick right there. We're gonna go to cast our ultimate, and goodbye, raw. We're gonna throw our meatball, that's gonna knock up the Bakasaur, and Al Kwong's able to clean him up. So whenever an auto attack based assassin jumps on you, a character like Bakasaura, you can just throw your meatball on yourself, and that will knock him back, and create a little bit of spacing for yourself. We're going to go ahead and pick up Doom Orb. Doom Orb is going to provide us 145 magical power, 200 mana, 25 MP5, and 6% movement speed. It has a passive that killing or assisting an enemy minion will provide you with one stack, granting 1% movement speed and 4 magical power per stack. Stacks last for 15 seconds and can stack up to 5 times. An enemy god, kill, or assist will provide 5 stacks. 
Doom Warp is going to give us a lot of power. It's also going to help us with our survivability a little bit by making us a little bit faster. We missed yet another one. Throw out our meatball, throw out our two, and we miss our one. Bakasaurus here. We're going to just fall back. We fire our one, but unfortunately it misses. We're trying to let our team know that they've rotated into the left jungle. Sensors activated. I'm going to go ahead and set up some defensive wards so we know if Bakasaur is trying to get us from that direction. Bakasaur is trying to get us from that direction. Ymir's here. We're going to throw our meatball. Throw our two. Throw our one. Unfortunately, he was outside the turret range. Let me aid you. Right here, Athena is coming in. We're going to try to get close to this Bakasora. Ross here. We get ulted by Bakasora. We use our Aegis. We're going to go to cast our ultimate. But Bakasora is able to clean us up. We should not have rotated into jungle with Athena rotating on us. We were like, oh, let's get close so she can get some damage off. But that got us out of the safety of our tower or within range of our tower. So we go down for it. We should have just sat and let Athena teleport it on us instead of going into a risky area. You're just feeding me kill. Your middle tower is under attack. The one will throw us in the backwards position a little bit. So we will move backwards. It is kind of useful for getting out of the range of enemies. We go ahead and hit the jungle shrine. Our red buff is available. We're going to go ahead and clear one more wave. We're going to place a turret throughout our one. We're clearing the archers. Our turret should be able to clean up the melee minions, so we should have time to rotate the red. Vulcan's turret can be basic attacked from ranged basic attacks without it being able to fire. You can destroy it right outside of its range. But whenever enemy gods do that, you can hit them with a meatball, hit them with a one, and put them in trouble. Bakasaur is here. We're going to just fall back to tower. Throw our meatball. Fire our one. We did a little under half health right there. We miss our meatball. We're going to shoot out our ultimate. We get the hit onto the Bakasaur. He uses his ultimate, so we're just going to fall back to tower. So Ao Kuang is able to clean up the Bakasaura. Ymir is a little out of position. It looks like he's going to be able to get away, so we're just going to rotate back to lane. Get the golden farm from this minion wave. Now that we've cleared that, we'll rotate back. He's probably gone. We might be able to get a gold fury right here. Ymir is back, so we probably are not going to be able to safely get that. So we're just going to rotate back to mid. Our minions are able to clear the tier 1 tower in mid. Cerberus is a little overstretched. I think we should make a play for him. We're going to clear the minion, so maybe he takes a little bit of tower damage. Unfortunately, he does not. He's able to clear the tower before it's able to target him. We've kind of exhausted our kit. We're going to throw a meatball. We are a little too far. We hit him with the one. We're going to throw out a turret and then rotate back to mid. Throw out a meatball. It's a little short. We're going to throw out our turret. We hit him with our one. We're going to go ahead and cast our ultimate. It hits the Bakasaur, but misses the raw. Throw a meatball onto the Mirror and Bakasaur. We're able to get two.
I think the turret looks really cool on this skin. Looks kind of like a ray gun. Definitely looks like a space gun. It looks like they're able to clean up Dan Zaboro and left. We're just going to rotate back mid, try to clear this wave. And the enemy jungler has left. He's coming back, so don't you worry. I'm going to go ahead, rotate right, try to help the Achilles out. Cerberus is very weak. They're able to get the pick onto Cerberus. I think we should make the play for the Pyromancer. Athena is not animating she's just walking without her feet moving i don't think that's a special effect that's gotta be a visual bug right interesting i'm gonna go ahead and clear the wave in mid we didn't miss any gold or xp right there our dance of is in a little bit of trouble we're gonna go ahead and cast our ultimate we're able to get the damage onto the raw to get the pick. We're going to throw out a turret. We do want to hang out in the back line. We don't want to overextend ourselves and be in the front line right here. We have a pretty penny in the pocket, so we're going to go ahead and back. We're going to be picking up Divine Ruin. Divine Ruin is going to provide us 90 magical power, 10 flat penetration. It has a passive that enemies hit by an ability are going to have 40% reduced healing and regeneration for 8 seconds. And the enemy Bakasora is back. Since we are going against a raw, I think it makes sense to pick up some anti-heal. If for whatever reason you felt like you didn't need anti-heal at all, I think that Spear of Desolation is a great flat penetration item for Vulcan. We want to get our team to push him through tower, but the enemies are rotating in. We're kind of in the front line, so we're going to start falling back. Ooh, Ymir could have froze us right there. We're going to fire our one. We get some damage onto the Ymir. We're going to throw out a turret, throw out our meatball. Ra's able to get the pick onto Athena, so now it's just Achilles and myself falling back. Four people chasing. Achilles uses his ultimate. Probably didn't need to do that. We're gonna go ahead and set up a turret. We get a meatball onto the Cerberus. We're gonna miss our one onto him. We're gonna go ahead and fire our ultimate. We get some good damage onto the Ymir, but we're aiming for the Cerberus. We're gonna throw a meatball, hit our one. Ymir is very weak. Athena's rotating in. We're gonna try to get some pressure onto this Roth. If we fire our one, it's going to push us in the wrong direction. We're going to throw a meatball over the wall, and we're able to get a pick onto the Ymir. Bakasaur is here. We're going to use our beads to remove the slow. Fire our one. And then we're going to throw our turret to where if he chases us, he's going to take shots. We're going to throw our meatball on ourselves. Unfortunately, he's able to wiggle out of it. We're going to miss our one. Two people here. We hit our one that time. We're going to throw our meatball. Throw out our turret. Throw out our one. Al Kuang is able to get the pick onto the Bakasura. Ra is probably zooming around, so I don't think we're going to be able to catch up to him. So we're just going to rotate back to mid lane. Dan Zabora almost gets the pick on the Phoenix over in the left lane. Attack the Gold Fury. I think now would be an excellent time to hit Gold Fury. Dan Zabora is rotating to the red buff though, so we're just going to rotate to our red buff. We can't solo Gold Fury, we need Dan Zabora's help. Throw out our meatball, hit our one. That would have been an excellent time to do the meatball turret one combo. Unfortunately, we were a little lazy with placing our turrets this game. We throw the meatball, 
Hit him at the one, but he uses his Aegis. Ymir and Danzabora are close by, so we are going to kind of hang back. Danzabora is in a bit of a bad position. We do have our ultimate. We lost vision on them, so we're not going to use our ultimate. We're going to go ahead and ward the Gold Fury, rotate back to middle lane, the safe route, and then clear this wave. We do have enough money for our next item, so we do want to find a good time to back. We don't want to back while there's minions in mid lane, right in the middle of middle lane. We want to back once we've cleared them. So we're going to go ahead, back, and pick up Soul Gem. Soul Gem is going to provide us 80 magical power, 150 health, 12% magical lifesteal, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that on successful hits with an ability, you gain one stack. At four stacks, your next ability that damages an enemy god will deal damage equal to 30% of your magical power to each god it hits, and will heal yourself and allies within 20 units for 40% of your magical power, and will consume the four stacks. So right now, we have about 500 magical power. 30% of that is going to be an additional 150 damage. If you can get your ultimate with four stacks to hit multiple people on the enemy team, that ultimate will absolutely chunk them. Enemy missing middle. Help Enemy right missing lane. Left. Missing left. Why did you save him? Looks like three people over in right. Now would be an excellent time to go for Gold Fury. But it looks like we're going to rotate in. Oh no. We're going to throw a meatball. We're able to hit somebody. Spockasaurus here. We try to use our one, but we get crippled by his ultimate so we use our beads then use our one to get back we fire our ultimate just to make sure we get it off in case we died we hit our one al kuang is not able to gobble the bakasora we're able to get some good damage onto the ymir cerberus is pushing that right tower i feel like our team should be able to clean up the raw and ymir Oh, this Bakasaur over there as well. For some reason, we rotate right. We might have been better off helping our team over and left, especially since Achilles is able to just teleport over. Probably not our best call this game. They're still chasing the raw. It looks like Bakasaur was able to get out. Now Raw is super deep. I feel like he's going to get caught on that tower. He's just running through the tower, it looks like. <laughs> he's taking my team on quite the chase. I feel like maybe we should have rotated it over and helped. We get some good damage onto the Sir, but we do need to fall back. Attack the Gold Fury. Defend right lane. Attack the gold fury. On my way. Now we should be able to. Oh, Bakasaurus here. We're going to throw out our three. Get the knock up. Throw out our two. And we're able to clean them up with our one. Attack the gold fury. Help. The ends of board just does not want to help us with this gold. We're going to throw our turret outside of the range of the Gold Fury, so that way it just gets continuous shots off. And then somebody takes the Gold Fury out of the range of our turret. On my way. You're right We're going to rotate right, try to help out this Al Kuang. We're going to cast our ultimate. We're able to get the pick onto the Ymir. We're going to come around, throw out our turret, throw out our three, hit him with the one. He jumps back. He's within range of our turret. He gets body blocked on the turret. We're going to hit him with the one, and Al Kuang is able to gobble the Cerberus. Hey, 
We're going to go ahead and push up right a little bit since Achilles is down. Looks like three people in mid pushing. I feel like we might be better off trying to help the team fight in mid than going for this tower. Raw's rotating in, we're gonna hit him with the three, hit him with the one, and we're able to clean up the raw. Bakasaur is here. Looks like it's just him. We're gonna be a little aggressive right here. Bakasaur uses his jump. We have our ultimate in two seconds. We should probably fire that at him. We're thinking about it. Dina rotates in by using her ultimate. We're going to get the Danzabora with our 3-1 combo. We're able to use our 1 to get outside of the range of the Cerberus. We have two people pushing us right here. We're going to use our beats to avoid the Mirror Freeze. Fire 1 to get a little bit further away from them. They're at our turret, so if they chase, they're going to take some damage. Cerberus is here. We're going to fire our 1. Go ahead and cast our ultimate. Try to get a little bit of life still going. He is a very tanky boy. We don't have any percent penetration, so we're not doing great damage to the Cerberus. We fire one. I think we probably should have tried to Aegis that and then fire our one. So unfortunately, we go down. I think our team probably could have made the play for the real fire giant, not the pyromancer right there. After going into Soul Gem, we're going to go ahead and go into Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver is going to provide us 95 magical power, 300 mana, and 10% flat or 10% penetration, not flat penetration. It has a passive that your abilities deal an additional 2% of the target's maximum health as magical damage. If the target had over 2,000 health, this damage scales up. This scales up to 7% max health at 2,750 health. Subsequent hits against the same target do half the bonus damage for the next 3 seconds. We're able to avoid the Cerberus ultimate, we're going to throw out a meatball. Hit him with the one. Bakasaur is on us. We're going to go ahead and cast our ultimate. We're going to use our Aegis. And it looks like our team was able to clean up the Bakasaur. We're going to throw out a turret. Kind of create a safe zone for us. That's three down. We should be able to get a Phoenix right here. We're going to throw out our Meatball. Throw out our turret. Unfortunately, both miss. We're able to get the middle Phoenix. With just two people left, we might be able to get the game right here. We're able to get the pick onto the Emir. It looks like they're Dan Zaboro left. We're gonna throw out our meatball. Al Kwong's able to clean up the raw. We throw out our turret, but our team takes the Titan to the far corner. We're in a little bit of trouble. Fakasora is here. We're going to throw out our meatball. Fire our one. We miss our one. We're going to cast our ultimate. He uses his Aegis. 
We're gonna fire our one, throw our meatball. We're able to do enough damage to get Bakasora to fall back. Serb might still be chasing us though. And the enemy team surrenders. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.